in this video I would like to show you how I do the bowling game kata. For the rules of this kata please follow the link in the description. I will start by doing the kata the way Bob Martin does it in his talks. After that I will refactor the solution and I'll explain my motivation behind each step. Let's get started. I will start off by writing a test for the gutter game that is a game consisting of balls that miss each of the 10 pins. As I start writing the test, I have to stop almost immediately. Since my code does not compile, the means I try to create the bowling game object. I create the class. Then similarly, I need to stop to create the row function. Once I have the failing test for the gutter game, turning it green is just a matter of returning zero. Next up is a test for a game of all single hits. The simplest way to pass the test is to add a member variable and count the number of pins hit after each roll. As a quick refactor of the test, I move the object creation into a setup method. The next interesting case is the spare. The test for that is pretty straightforward. Once we have a failing test though, we face a problem. We would need some flag to remind us to add the next draw twice when we discover a spare. That sounds horrible. Also, it's a bit weird that the row function does the calculation instead of the score function. So let's disable our spare test for now and refactor. First, we turn the score member variable into an array that stores the result of each row and replace the score function with a for loop summing these numbers. On the other hand, this will not solve our problem regarding spares, since we need to look at entire frames to decide if we have a spare. So next we need to change the loop so that it loops through each frame and not through rows one by one. Once we are done refactoring, we can re-enable the test and check if it's still failing. To pass the test, I will introduce a conditional that checks if we have a spare frame. If this is true, then the score to be added is 10 plus the bonus for the extra ball. Now let's comment next the if looks really ugly, so let's extract it into a is spare function. While we are at it, I will also extract the bonus for the spare and the calculation of regular frames. Going back to the test, we also have an ugly comment here, so let's extract the method, raw spare. The for loop that we use to roll 17 and gutter balls is also used in two other places, although with different number of rows and pins. It seems like a nice time to extract that as well. First I introduce two new local variables. This way, when I extract the method, the IDE will automatically create the, the two arguments for me. Once the method is extracted, I can inline the variables I just created. While I'm at it, I will also replace the for loops in the other two tests with the raw many function. Next up is the test case for strike. We roll a strike and two more balls so that those can be added as bonus. The 
The rest of the post can be garter balls, for which I can use the new raw money function. The score is 10 for the strike, 3 plus 4 is the bonus, and another 3 plus 4 is the score for the second frame. The test fails. Now, if I want to pass this test, I would have to write an if statement that checks for the first ball of the frame. However, as we write this conditional, it turns out that we have made the assumption that all frames consist of two balls. A frame with a strike consists of a single ball, so we need to go back and refactor the code. Let's disable our test. So the problem is that we assume that the index of the first ball in a frame is twice the frame ID. Now instead of calculating the index of the first ball from the frame ID, we will keep track of it separately. First I introduce the new variable and after that I replace the function arguments one by one while also changing the functions accordingly. I could have taken smaller steps here, but I feel confident that I can do this without error. I use the rename refactoring tool of the ID to change the variable names to reflect the new behavior. Finally, I duplicate the line for incrementing the frame index and push it inside both branches of the if. After re-enabling the test, it still fails, but now we are all set to pass it. I just add an extra branch to the if and the proper score calculation. Once the test is passing, I quickly extract the condition and the bonus into functions. Back in our test file, I do another extract method to make the test more readable. At this point, the implementation is complete. Just to make sure that everything works fine, let's try the test for the perfect game. Although the perfect game consists of 10 single ball frames, we need to add two extra balls that are used to calculate the bonus for the last two frames. That sums up to 12 rows. The score for a perfect game is 300 points, 30 points for each of the 10 frames, and the test passes out of the box. A bit of cleanup and reordering the functions and we are ready. At this point we could stop and Bob Martin does stop at this point. The solution actually does the job and it's relatively easy to understand. I still feel a bit uneasy about it though. What bothers me is the if with three branches in the score function. Each of the branches do two different things. They calculate the score for the current frame and move the frame index to the next frame. Let's see what we can do about this. First, I will duplicate the entire if structure. From the first copy, I remove the frame index related logic and from the second one, the score calculation. This way, I separated the two parts. Next, I will introduce local variable score for frame to prepare the stage to extract the score for frame method. Once that's done, I can inline the function back. Next, let's clean up the extractive function, inline the variables, and get rid of those horrible, horrible braces and comments. Similarly, I introduce a new variable next frame index to set the stage for extracting the next frame function. I inline the variable since we only needed it for the extract method. In the function, I do the same cleanup as before. Now our score function is even more readable. Again, this would be a nice place to stop refactoring unless you are as restless as I am. What bothers me in this solution is that we effectively have 
two different loop variables that are handled independently of each other. For me, this is unsettling, since if one has to remember to do two things together, it is almost inevitable to forget it. Of course, in this case, it's unlikely that we would reuse this kind of structure anywhere else, but it still feels unclean, so let's try to do something about it. The first idea is to extract the initialization and the increment into functions. But for that, we would have to make the frame ID and the frame index member variables. Sounds like a good idea anyway, since it is being passed around to almost every function. However, frame index is really a function local by nature. Making it a member variable will make this function unsafe in a multi-threaded environment. Also, the expression frame is all over this code, so maybe it's time that we admit that there is a frame class lurking in here. I will start by creating a bowling game frame class and adding a public ID variable. Next, I replace the frame integer in the loop of the score function with an instance of this class and use the ID variable to count the number of frames processed. Then I extract the has more condition into the frame class. Similarly, I introduce the next function. At this point, we can make the ID variable private. Next, I'd like to move the frame index into the frame class. I will start by creating a public variable again, and after that I will modify the score function to use that instead. I forgot to initialize the index, so I have to go back and do that now. Finally, I removed the now useless frame index variable. Now that we have the index in the frame class, we have a chance to move the next frame index function into the frame class as well. While copying the function, I realized that I left an unnecessary branch in the function. So let's delete that first and copy the function body again. We also need to move the strike function. So I will copy that too. The isTrack function relies on the roles array, which I will just pass into the frame class through the constructor. At this point, I will update the score function to use the new function inside the frame class. Since we have the frame index in the frame class as a member variable, I can remove the function arguments from both functions we just moved. The reason we started this refactor was to avoid having to keep track of two loop variables in the score function. After all the work we have just done, I can just move the call to the next frame index function inside the next function in the frame class. Since this function is really simple at this point, I can even inline it after turning the if statement into a ternary operator. I just get rid of the braces and the score function looks really expressive at this point. We just iterate through the frames and sum up the scores. The details of the iteration are hidden. The score frame function screams of feature envy at this point. So let's move it to the frame class where it belongs. To do that, I will first modify each function that takes the frame index to take the frame instead.
after we are done with this, we should move each function to the frame class one by one. But I feel really confident at this point. I will just cut some corners and move all of the functions at once. After copying all of the functions, I delete the isStrike function since that was already moved before. For the rest, I will do a find and replace of the frame with this and delete the use this arguments. Finally, I update the score for frame function to reflect my changes. I also make it public and update the score function in the game class to use the moved function instead of the original. To finalize the refactor, I just delete the functions that are not used anymore. I also change the order of the functions according to the step down rule. I also reformat the single line functions, they are mostly just details anyway. Since the score for frame function is now a member of the frame, this name is a little redundant. I rename it to simply score. And that's how I do the bowling game cutout. Bye bye.